The tactical shooter series known as SOCOM has been around for quite a while, offering a very different experience from most other games in the category. With SOCOM 4, the series adds support for the PlayStation Move and tweaks its plan of attack to take on an expanded audience. Does it successfully execute its strategy? Here's his pet. Make sure you stab him with it. <laughs> There's a story to this war, and it centers on a commander named Cullen Gray, who leads a five-member NATO Special Forces squad in Southeast Asia to battle a revolutionary force called the Naga. Things aren't quite as straightforward as they initially seem, and though Cullen is as blank and flat as an empty clipboard, there's at least a bit of human drama thanks to the supporting characters. Wouldn't getting the fuck out of this place be a better plan? A sniper codenamed 45, who stars in several solo missions, drives the story more than the character you actually control for most of the game, and the military intrigue easily overshadows the shallowly constructed emotional component. There's many layers beneath its peel. But the sweetest, darkest juice is at its core. Enough! While it's become standard practice with shooters now, SOCOM has always put a lot of priority on its multiplayer component, which gives you plenty of opportunities to engage in various cooperative and competitive operations. Adversarial modes have you seeking out or protecting various objectives. These objective-based matches are always hard fought thanks to smart map layouts with the asymmetrical bomb squad requiring a particularly heavy level of cooperation with teammates. We've defused the bomb. If you're playing in classic mode, you'll only get one life, which encourages careful play, but by default, you usually have the ability to respawn after a short time limit. This actually feels like the best fit for certain game modes like Last Defense, which inevitably turns into a mad scramble to either overwhelm the opponent or defend against an encroaching horde. We've recovered our data. Hold this point. On the cooperative front, there are two variants that pit players against an enemy force of customizable numbers and difficulty, although the differences aren't very pronounced. Taking down every target in sight is the key to accomplishing your objectives, whether you're eliminating enemy leaders in takedown or messing up their program in sabotage. We need to do this fast. No mistakes, no heroics. The single-player campaign is long-lived and challenging, alternating between standard squad-based missions and more restrictive, less satisfying stealth missions. You're also offered what the game calls a custom campaign, which is essentially a series of player versus computer missions stitched together with no narrative or frills. Though it feels rather odd and devoid of context, it's pretty good if you just want to quickly get in and take down some bad guys. Area clear, Commander. SOCOM 4 creates a deliberate and tactical pace with a style that rewards careful planning and an obsessive use of cover. Enemy accuracy is high and the bullets are very lethal, so missions typically involve a measured, methodical push forward. Simple squad controls let you give your two teams basic orders that move them into position or attack specific enemies. You can set waypoints to program more complicated paths and delay orders to direct coordinated and decisive assaults. It's fairly simple, and for the most part, it works. As for direct control, the basic act of aiming and firing feels smooth and the ability to dive into a prone position or quickly take cover are welcome. There's a lot of complexity to the control scheme, which can take time to learn. The game's somewhat awkward transitions between the third and first person perspectives are one of the failings of an imperfect cover system. Various factors can prevent you from popping out and taking shots at an enemy, and you'll have to live with the vulnerability and frustration until you figure out the system's quirks. The best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passion and intensity. Yates. Right, well that's how he works. The game's relentlessly linear, focused campaign sometimes alleviates these problems, but in other instances, it actually amplifies them. We're gonna plant some claymores on the road, then set up for the ambush. Certain encounters give you a shot at a ready-made ambush, while others force you into a head-on confrontation with a little room to maneuver. You'll also find heavily scripted stealth missions and battles against armored vehicles, such as helicopters or tanks, that feel as if they were ripped from other games, unnecessarily undermining SOCOM 4's strengths for the sake of variety and spectacle. While the campaign essentially bakes in a certain amount of frustration, many of the issues that strain the experience in single player come close to being non-issues in multiplayer. Despite some awkwardness, the tactical feel of the game works toward its benefit. Just like fucking Sudan, eh, Slate? SOCOM 4's PlayStation Move support actually works pretty well. 
While not a superior method to playing with a controller by any means, and it's clear that the game wasn't designed from the ground up with the move in mind, the motion controls feel good enough that you'll nonetheless actually want to mess around with them from time to time. I've assembled a team for you outside. You've worked with Schweitzer and Wells before. How do you want to play this? After you, Commander! SOCOM 4 certainly has its moments, but there isn't really much that stands out. You'll certainly notice a general lack of variety in the settings, with only a few unique locations keeping the action from feeling wholly plain. The animation, particularly when a character jumps or convulses in a canned death, feels inadequate for the most part. Other small items stick out in this otherwise decent presentation, such as the almost vintage crunching sound that accompanies a headshot. You might even imagine a Foley guy off-screen squishing a grapefruit. Good. Now you need to move that body before the patrol spot it. While it isn't a huge step forward for the series, SOCOM 4 successfully fulfills its duties as a tactically-minded, slightly more serious shooter for consoles. The game makes several middling attempts to align itself more closely with other successful designs while keeping its identity mostly intact. Despite a few stumbles in engineering its single-player experience and some irregularities with its controls, this is still a unique and solid experience, provided you plan to enlist in online multiplayer. Go team, secure the roof! Resign! Down! Go move!